Get ready for it. It's a big time middleweight fight coming up this weekend. We have number 12 versus number 14. It's the sniper Nasruddin Imavov. He's going to be taking on action man Chris Curtis. And it's got to be a little bit awkward coming into this fight. Because for Imavov, he's supposed to fight Kelvin Gaslam in a main event. Out is Gaslam in on short notice. At 205 pounds, it was a light heavyweight fight. He fights one half of the Man Dance podcast, Sean Strickland. And in that one, Strickland, 204. Nasty Imovov, 194, and it looked like it. And in that one, Imovov couldn't get a striking going on the outside. And what makes it more awkward is the other half of the Man Dance podcast was in the corner of Sean Strickland. It's the action man, Chris Curtis. So Curtis, who's done one camp with Strickland to get ready for Imovov, although abbreviated, extremely abbreviated, now he gets the opportunity to implement the game plan against Imovov. And what I found really interesting for Curtis was between round two and round three, Curtis asked for Strickland to throw... The two and the three is the combo with the, the, he called it a toe kick. For Curtis, you'll see that a lot out of him in that southpaw stance. He'll throw the two and the three quite a bit. He won't, he will jab a lot, but he will mention that and he will throw that left straight, mix it up with the right hook. And that's where Curtis, once he starts to get rolling and he's moving forward, you see it against Vieira, you see it in his win against Brennan Allen. When he lands those powerful strikes, kind of freezes a lot of guys. Oh, yeah. For Imovov, who relies a lot on his movement, if he freezes... Well, that's really it for him. So when you look at this fight, Matt, I mean, Curtis, a striker, a boxer that doesn't throw a lot of kicks. For Imavov, a kickboxer that doesn't throw a lot of kicks. Neither one of these guys throw a ton of kicks in their own merit, but they do both like to do it with the hands, albeit in completely different styles. With Imavov bouncing a lot on the outside with low hands, and Chris Curtis, Philly shell all the time and mixing that jab in with the 2-3 combo. And that's, I have a really hard time with this fight for many reasons. We've seen both versions of both guys, right? Like, we've seen different versions of both guys. And I guess for Chris Curtis, it always does come down to who the matchup is, right? It feels like he excels against guys who are kind of like the ally Quinta build, if you will. If you're really good at wrestling, but you're a bit of a limited striker, well, Chris Curtis can defend all your takedowns, force you to be that limited striker, he's probably going to knock you out because he does have really heavy hands for being an undersized middleweight. And I do think he is undersized for the weight class. Like, you don't look at him at middleweight and think, wow, this guy's overpowered a ton of fighters. Look at the Hidalfo fight. Like, even against Calvin Gaslam. Calvin Gaslam's on a big 185 or a guy who used to fight at 170. They're pretty similar in stature for the weight class, so it will be interesting to see how the physicality of a guy like Imovov is going to play into this fight because you bring it up. Imovov isn't really like a 205-er. He's a big guy for 185. I don't think he ever would fight at 205. And we kind of saw that based on his way in, and I, I guess he was kind of getting ready for a 185 fight, so be that for what it is. Maybe he could have uh, shown up near 205. Sean Strickland was riding dirt bikes today before he accepted Sean it. Strickland's a mystery. That guy makes no sense at all. But for Imovov, he was still able to throw on the back foot in that fight. And I know the volume did end up playing in Sean Strickland's favor, but Sean Strickland's kind of an outlier with his volume in the middleweight division. He's not a guy who's going to really hurt you with a ton of shots, but he's going to throw 15, 16, 17 punch combos, it feels like. So I'll be curious to see if Chris Curtis is able to move forward and at least threaten with his boxing combinations because I don't think he's going to be able to throw the same kind of volume as a guy like Sean Strickland. But if he is able to get on the inside of those strikes of Imovov, I like the body shots of Chris Curtis. I think those are something we're going to see a lot of and if he's able to use that right hook to the body and then respond with the left hook up top that's the combination that Chris Curtis has a lot of success with. Curtis is one of those guys I mean already 4-2 and two in the UFC he's got more bonuses he's kind of been there done that and he's had that meteoric rise off the wins over Phil Haas and Brendan Allen. Well, we and talked about him retiring before he ever came to yeah, the Yeah and again you want the tinfoil hat the MMA math I mean Curtis beat Phil Haas and Nasir Nimovov beat up Phil Haas on the feet and had him hurt but he struggled with the wrestling so you look at the two losses for both of these guys for Curtis he gets out volume by Jack Hermanson on the outside and he loses to Kelvin Gaslam in a fight where Gaslam wins the first Gaslam wins the second even though there was that big clash of heads but in the third round Curtis fight, rallied though. in oh, the yeah, third round really and won that fight. third so 29-28 for Gaslam whereas for Imovov he loses that fight against Strickland pretty handily he won the fifth round but this is a three-round fight, and that doesn't really play into it all that much. So you can't look into it too much. But for both of these Can guys... Can I at least say, though, what it does prove is he's not... I think his cardio has gotten better than what it was. I, I, I questioned his cardio a little bit earlier on in his career, but I do think that that round, because he was getting beat up bad in the fourth round against Sean Strickland, and I thought it was impressive to see him rally in that fifth round. Well, and the, the thing that I struggle with in this matchup, for Chris Curtis, I mean, he goes out there, his last win was over Joaquin Buckley, who is now a welterweight and looked pretty good at it. But yeah. when you look at a guy like Curtis, he struggles in the first round and in the second round to try and pin down Buckley. Buckley's in, Buckley's out, Buckley's in, Buckley's out. Buckley throws head kicks, and then he mixes in his boxing 
Imovov moves like that inside and outside, lower hands, because Buckley holds him really high, but Imovov doesn't kick like a guy like Buckley does, so I'll be interested to see if either guy decides he wants to kick, because we all know Chris Curtis way back when, first season of Contender Series, that head kick, knockout win, and then he doesn't get the contract, and retires, then he comes back, and then he retires again, then he comes back. I'll be interested to see which version we get, and Chris, we know you're out there, and you're watching this video Shout right out. now. When it does come down to the matchup, the odds in the fight are very close. I don't know where the topology votes are going to be. That's because I have a hard time trying to pick this one too. I'm going to say over under 65% Curtis. I think they'll be over. I think they're going to be over. It's the opposite way. 855 total votes, 59% Imavov, 86% by decision. For the 41% that have Curtis, 58% decision, 29% by the knockouts. Matt, who do you have in the matchup? Uh, I have Imavov, Chris Curtis. I'm really sorry if you're out there watching this fight. I really am. I think you have a great opportunity to win. If you get on the inside of Imavov's range and you are able to land those body shots, it's wild that I'm talking directly to him because I feel like I am. But I think he does have all of the skills to go out there and win this fight. But I do still think Imavov can have success on the back foot. I don't think Chris Curtis is a guy... If he makes him pay with the shots moving forward, then yes, he can win this fight. I'm just not 100% convinced that he can throw enough punches to go out there and win this fight by decision. We'll see how it plays out. Again, Chris Curtis has such a good boxing defense. Sometimes he waits in the pocket a little bit too much or... He's able to really land that perfect counter shot and hurt his opponent. But one, two, three jabs in a row for Imovov. You got to watch out for the jab, but also the uppercut and then the straight right and the uppercut, especially when he's in the clinch position. You saw some of the things he could do to Edmund Shabazian when they fought. Mm. So I do have Imovov in the matchup, but I'm right 50-50 on this matchup. It's a great matchup. fight. Like this should be a yeah, really entertaining I really want to hear from the fans on this one. They could completely tear us to shreds or be in agreement, but we'll see what happens on Saturday night. A big fight. At middleweight on this Vancouver card. Let us know who you have. A big time main event for the title up at the top. Keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks. We always say, let's get, get into it. it.